The issues that we're facing are quite simply this. We lost office in 2010 on the back of a financial crisis brought about by the banking collapse in the USA and consequent collapse here. It was brought about by crazy investments, by the subprime mortgage crisis, by the greed of bankers, by the lack of regulation. It was brought about by a whole lot of circumstances. It was not caused by the alleged overpayment of nurses, street cleaners, factory workers or anybody else. It was not brought about by the benefit system or the cost of the National Health Service. And we were told the only way forward was to set an arbitrary date to move back into budget surplus, an arbitrary date by which we'd pay down the debt. Incidentally, the debt has gone up under George Osborne, not down. And that, uh, as a result, there would have to be austerity. Austerity being cuts in public expenditure, loss of several hundred thousand jobs in the civil service, wage freeze for public sector workers, cuts in benefits, cuts in the living standard of the poorest, freeze on council house building virtually throughout most of the country, and you look at the results. What are the results, really? The richest five families in Britain, the richest five families, the fingers of one hand, own the equivalence of the total wealth of 20% of the entire population. The richest 30 families, the richest 100 families, own the equivalent of 30%. We live in a grotesquely unequal society, and that inequality is getting worse. What he is saying to me is that I would have been right to have stayed and spoken in favour of policies coming out of Europe, destroying NATO, massive nationalisation, destruction of any private education, any private health service, moving towards a semi-East European state. That would have been all right within the tabernacle of the Labour Party. My objection to austerity is that it is not an economic formula, it is a political formula about rebalancing our society possibly in the image of the 1930s, and probably in George Osborne's mind, more likely the 1830s. It is all about rebranding re our society, reducing the role of public services, and increasingly putting the bill onto the individual. Indeed, David Cameron was thinking aloud a few weeks ago, saying, how about we get rid of national insurance and just have individual insurance as well? Well, it might work very well if you're a wealthy family to have individual insurance to guarantee yourself against any ill that comes about. The whole point, the whole point of national insurance and the welfare state is that we all protect each other, we're all protected by each other. ...of the Labour Party. I mean, I'll be blunt with you, Roy, you talk about cancer. I feel very strongly about people whose entire life depends on the working class movement. Your father was a miner, he was in jail in the general strike, you got into Parliament as a Labour member, every office you held was because of the Labour Party, cabinet minister appointed by a Labour Prime Minister, and then you left the party. You have to ask yourself, a couple of questions. This austerity and inequality, what's it doing? Slicing apart local authority budgets, slicing apart household budgets, closing libraries, closing facilities for the elderly, closing care centres, closing lots of things, and privatising, privatising, privatising all along the way. And then you left the party. Now that's a cancerous growth, not personally, but I think people who betray those who gave them power are the real threat, and I must say that bluntly to you because I think that means you have to Now, having said that, <laughs> having said that, do you think you're promising to ask Derek Hatton being leader of the Labour I'm not, I'm only saying, Roy, I'm only saying, Roy, that the people that stay true to those who put them in power, these are the people I admire, not the people who climb into power on the backs of others, kick away the ladder, and are presented by everybody as men of principle and moderate. The uh, numbers of families in Liverpool that are hit because of the combination of the change in tax credits and benefit cups, half of all the families in Liverpool are going to be hit by this budget and this welfare bill that's gone through. That is the strategy they're following. Now, if I asked all of you now 
to stick your hand up. Please don't do so because it would be a forest. Um, <laughs> if you supported the principle of a health service free at the point of use as a human right, you'd all say yes. No question. You'd all say absolutely yes. It was the great achievement of the post-war Labour government. It's the great achievement of Anarin Bevan that he managed to push it through. I might add, at a time when... I might add, at a time when uh, the uh, debt ratio was 250%, it's now 80%. That government invested in people, in hope, in the future. This government does the opposite. Saying right, I'm only saying right that the people that stay true to those who put them in power, these are the people I admire, not the people who climb into power on the backs of others, kick away the ladder, and are presented by everybody as men of principle and moderate. I'm only saying right that the people that stay true to those who put them in power, these are the people I admire, not the people who climb into power on the backs of others, kick away the ladder, and are presented by everybody as men of principle and moderate.